Hi guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to my introduction to Kotlin video series. So before we get into this language, let's take a look at the straw poll real quick. So I held a straw poll to see what language you guys would want to see next. And this isn't the main reason why I chose Kotlin, but it did win by one vote. There was a moment there where it was tied with Reason. So I chose to do Kotlin because I just did Rust. Rust and Reason are fairly similar because they're both based off of the OCaml language. And I didn't really want to cover two syntactically similar languages one after the other. Kotlin is a statically typed programming language that runs on the Java virtual machine. It can also be compiled to JavaScript and there also is a native compiler in the works that I believe is a beta build at the moment. Kotlin also has 100% interop with Java and with Android and that is one of the main reasons why Kotlin is a first class language on the Android platform. Kotlin does have a standalone compiler and you can get that. However, if you do want some great support for Kotlin, it's best to just just use the IntelliJ IDE or to use Eclipse because Kotlin was actually created by the guys who created IntelliJ JetBrains and that is actually the IDE that we will be using for this tutorial series. So I have here the IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate Edition. You can get the Community Edition for free and that comes with Kotlin. Alright so in this video we're just going to be covering basic types in Kotlin. This includes numbers and letters and strings and we'll be covering things like type inference, string interpolation, and a few other ideas. As with all languages, however, we should write a hello world program first. To do this, I'm just going to write in the function println, and then I'm going to write in the string hello comma world with an exclamation point. And now we can run this and you'll see at the bottom a console will pop up and it will say hello world after the application gets compiled. This main function is our entry point for all of our programs. And then this println function allows us to print a string or whatever is embedded in that string to the console and then it creates a new line. Kotlin has two types of variables. We have what are called read only or immutable variables and we also have what are called mutable or changeable variables. We can create an immutable variable by using the keyword val. This variable called read is immutable which means that we can't change it. If I try to reassign read to another string, you'll see here that it says val cannot be reassigned. If we want to have an immutable variable, we use the var keyword. So this change variable is immutable. You can see here, I assign it to this string. This is mutable. And then I can reassign it to another string. This is changeable and mutable. And then we can use the println statement and we can use string interpolation to put the read and change variables in here and string interpolation we just use these dollar signs and then we put in the actual variable names running this application prints out this is immutable and then there's a space and then it says this is changeable and mutable. Kotlin also uses type inference so by creating a variable i and setting it equal to 10 this variable will automatically be an integer, but we can also explicitly state the type. So we can call var a and then put a colon and then the type annotation, which in this case is integer. And then we set this equal to 20. And then I can just add these two inside of a println function, and this will come back and print out 30. There are six types of numbers inside of Kotlin. We have integers, we have shorts and bytes, we have longs, floats, and doubles. An integer is a 32-bit type, our double is a 64-bit type, our float is a 32-bit type, and our long is a 64-bit type. Longs and integers are whole numbers, and doubles and floats are decimal numbers. And all of these specific types are represented by JVM primitive types, except in very specific cases. And that's something that we'll talk about a bit later. You can see here that each of them has a fair amount of range. So the minimum integer is this negative number here, and the maximum integer is this positive number here. And then for our minimum double, we have this written in scientific notation. So it has quite a few decimal places. And then our maximum double also has quite a few decimal places. The same with our float, it's also written in scientific notation, and then our long is fairly large as well. Now it's important to note that doubles only have 15 digits of precision. Anywhere past that is not guaranteed. So if I add this 
to itself, you'll see here that it will actually lose precision. And you can see here, rather than getting 2.222 at the end, it becomes three because it lost precision because it has 16 decimal places rather than 15. So this is just something to note. It's not really something that's going to come into play very often, but yeah, it's something to keep in mind. We also have Boolean types inside of Kotlin. So I can write true is a Boolean type, and this will give us a Boolean type. So this should give us true. And the same for false. False is a Boolean type, and this should give us a Boolean type, which will be true as well. So Boolean types can either be true or false. These are good for logical operators, things like if statements, greater than, equal to, stuff like that, convert into Boolean types. And you'll see here that both of these come out as true because they are in fact Boolean types. We also have characters inside of Kotlin. You create a character using single quotes. So this character G is our character. We've put it in inside of this variable letter, and then we're using string interpolation to put it inside of this string that says letter is a character, and then this will print out G. And here you go, it says letter is a character, G. We can also do what is called casting. So if we want to convert from one type to another, we can do so. And if I want to convert this character into an integer, I can just call letter dot to int inside of this string interpolation block. So you can see here that we're using these curly braces. This means that anything inside of the curly braces is a piece of code, and whatever that resolves to then gets embedded inside of the string. So G becomes the number 71 when it gets converted into an integer. So you can see here that we can do this for various different types. We have a float 3.14, we're converting it into an integer. Then we have an integer 1000, and we're converting it to a float and a character. And then we have a character X, and we're converting it to a double. And we're doing all of this inside of a string interpolation block. So this is just the code inside of here resolving to three, which gets printed out inside of the string. And then A becomes 1000.0. And then the character here becomes this weird eight sign. And then X as a double is 120.0. All right, so we've looked at characters, we've looked at casting, and we've looked at integers. Now let's look at strings. So strings are prefaced with double quotes, unlike characters, which are prefaced with single quotes. So this is a string. We can also create block strings. So this is a long string. It uses three quotes at the beginning and three quotes at the end, and it will maintain the format that you put it in. So this will have no spaces at the beginning, but it will have a line break between string and it. And you use these kinds of strings to hold things like SQL lines that you want to execute and large paragraphs of text that you want to put into your application. We can concatenate strings by using plus signs. So this takes the F name, which is John, and then we add it to a space literal, and then we add it to our last name, which is Doe. And we can print out these different strings like this. And you can see we get John Doe from printing out full, and then we have our big block string, which gets printed out as we wrote it. And then we have our normal A string that we also print out as well. As we saw before, we can also take advantage of string interpolation. So I could write full in here using a dollar sign, and this will print out John space Doe. And we could just write it in like this. So we have first name plus space plus last name, and this we concatenate them together inside of this block. And when we execute it, we'll actually get John space Doe. Say we want to execute basic arithmetic inside of a string. We can just say 15 plus 20 equals, and then we open up our string interpolation block using the dollar sign and then the curly brackets. And then we put in 15 plus 20, and then this will execute and give us the result, which will then be printed out in this string. And there you go, it says 15 plus 20 equals 35. We could also get the length of this string. So this will count how many characters are inside of this entire string. And this will include this as a resolved block. So this will count as 35 rather than 15 plus 20. And so you see here that we get 12. It's this plus 35, which would be about 12 characters. We can also get a specific index of a string. So say I want to get the second index of our string, meaning this S, I can get that. And you'll see here that it does print out the S. We can also get a subsequence. So from index number two to index number eight. And this prints out string for us. And we can also check to see if a string contains something. So we're checking to see if our string contains string, and this is true. So it should come back as true. And you can see here we get S, we get string, and we get tr There are various different methods that we can run on all the different basic types, not just strings. Also keep in mind that strings are zero indexed, which means that the first index of a string is zero, and the second index is one. So when I called this get function, 
a would be 0, the space would be 1, and then s is 2. And the same with this subsequence starts at 2, so 0, 1, 2. And then it goes to 8, which is this next space up here. So it picks from 2 all the way to 8. It doesn't include 8 itself, so we don't get the space here. Anyway, the point of all this is that all the basic types in Kotlin act as objects. So for any of you guys who have worked with Ruby or Java or many of the other object-oriented languages like that, where everything in the language is basically an object, Kotlin sort of acts that way as well. Okay guys, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe and like. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment box below. Like for instance, if you feel that the colors of the IDE that I'm using are not good enough, or if you don't like the font, or if you think the font should be bigger, things like that. I'm always open to suggestions as far as that's concerned. If you dislike the video, just flat out, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night, guys.